All right, here we go. Raise your hand if you like epic naval battles, because we have one coming. Side 1A, outmaneuver the enemy of a storm on Cobus Haven. We got the Corsair deck. We got our fleet. We're going to set some warships aside. We're going to put the Raider flagship and a scouting ship in the staging area. We're going to find one of the Dole Amroth objectives and add it to the staging area, and then guard it with a card. That's a lot already. Side 1B is 10 quest points. We have the sailing mechanic, so make sure you check out my video on how that works. And then forced, when a ship enemy engages you, if you're off course, deal 2 damage to a ship objective you control. If you're on course, deal 2 damage to that ship enemy instead. If we are ever at the worst heading, the Raider flagship gets minus 50 engagement costs. So we're going to start the game with a guarded objective in the staging area. We get to pick one of these, so we can either choose the beacon, it's guarded, and if it is free of encounters, we're going to add it to the staging area controlled by the players. And then planning action, exhaust the beacon and spend five resources to take control of one set-aside copy of the Dol Amroth warship. We also have the Tower of Huron, and once it's free of encounters, we can reduce the archery total by four. Uh, archery in this quest. Okay, we also have the Seaward Tower. Once it's free, while the players control the Seaward Tower, look at two additional cards during a sailing test. And then finally, the Tower of the Gull. Once it's free, combat action. If the players control the Tower of the Gull, we can exhaust it to deal two damage to a non-unique ship enemy. The objective I'm going to choose to start the game with is the beacon. I want to try to get a hold of those warships that we're going to be setting aside. So we actually have to draw our hand and everything first before we would guard this card. So we have a little bit of work to do before we can see what this card is guarded by. And I have a lot of cards to show you that are in play. My goodness, there is a lot going on in this quest. And we're going to try to win using a trial by combat. You can win by outquesting the final stage or by doing enough damage to destroy the Raider flagship and that's what we're going to do. We're going to try to destroy the Raider flagship. I thought you guys would enjoy that since we did not destroy the Stormcaller in that quest. Okay, here are the two ships that are starting in the staging area. The scouting ship, we've seen this one before, so if we're ever off course it gets minus 15 engagement cost and it has a boarding one. It's 35 engagement and then the Raider flagship is 50 engagement, 35318 and it has boarding one, it's immune, and then only ship objectives can be declared attackers against the flagship, so that makes it hard to kill. And then at the end of each engagement phase, we're basically gonna get a boarding one, and another pirate is going to engage us. So you're gonna want to engage this thing when you can hopefully kill it the next turn. It's gonna take two turns to kill it at least. We have our Corsair deck, so that's all the pirates, so we're gonna give that a shuffle, and whenever we have the boarding keyword, one of these guys, or whatever the boarding value is, is going to engage us. And then the Dole Amroth warships are off to the right next to my compass. The two ships that we have in our fleet are the Dream Chaser. It has five willpower, four attack, four defense, 18 hit points. It's immune, it's sentinel. It can always be committed to the sailing test, even if you are not the first player. And it counts as two characters when it's committed to the sailing test. If it leaves play, we lose. We're also going to have the Silver Wing. A 2 4 2 14. It's immune, sentinel, range. Reduce your starting threat by 3. Each of my heroes gets plus 1 attack, and if it's destroyed, we are eliminated from the game. So, who do we have at the helm of our ships? We have leadership Denethor, 8 threat, 1133, Gondor Noble Steward. We start the game with two resources in his resource pool, and then we can move a resource from his resource pool to another Gondor hero's resource pool. We also have Dune here. I'm planning on him making some attacks up into the staging area. One, two, one, four. Rohan warrior. Dune here can target enemies in the staging area when he attacks alone. When he does so, he gets plus one, and then the Silverwing is gonna give him an additional attack. And then finally, finally, Tactics Eowyn is available for us to play. So she has nine threat, but you reduce her threat by three when you start the game so she's really a six she quests for four she's a one attack one defense three hit points and then you can do a big bomb effect where you raise your threat by three ready her and she gets plus nine attack to the end of the phase that's not going to help us against the raider flagship but it will help us take out any other big enemy that we no longer want to be engaged with so our starting threat because we get to reduce it by three thanks to Eowyn and three thanks to the Silverwing we're going to be starting at 19 so my whole so my strategy is with my threat super low I should not have to engage ships and Dune here with a weapon or two can take them out in the staging area and then when I'm ready 
I'm going to engage the Raider flagship. I should hopefully have a whole armada that I have bought, and I should be able to take that Raider flagship out. So that's the plan. This is a very hard quest, and I lost the first time I played it. So at the end of the video, if you want to stick around, you will see the loss. I'll show some clips from it. But let's get to the game that I actually won, and man, oh man, is it an epic game. All right, so let's look at this opening hand. Uh, cheap ally, another cheap ally, another cheap ally, some good questing, but honestly, not a great hand. No steward. No Gandalf, no weapons, no card draw. So that is going to get shuffled in. And, you know, one of the reasons this quest is so hard is the amount of success symbols for sailing tests is less than other quests. I looked through the deck, and I think there's only like 13 or 14 out of 30-some cards. I think you have like a one in three shot of getting a success symbol. So it, it's very easy to reveal five cards and maybe you'll get one success symbol out of those five. So sailing is a lot harder. It's very difficult to stay on course. So I really need to get allies in play. All right, Mulligan, Unexpected Courage, a Vassal comes in. We got a Snowborn Scout, Envoy, the Ethier Swordsman, and a Sneak Attack, which is great if I ever get Gandalf. This is okay. I can get three allies in on turn one. So that's very helpful for sailing tests. So not bad. Still no Steward, still no Weapon and no Gandalf, but uh, it's my mulligan, so I gotta take it. So now that we have our opening hand, we need to trigger the guarded keyword on the beacon, so that means we reveal the top card of the encounter deck. If it's an enemy or location, it gets attached, and if it's a treachery, we have to do the run revealed effects. I'm hoping for a treachery. In my first game, I got a ship that was a real pain to get off of the beacon. I eventually did it, but then the beacon ended up getting guarded by something else later, and that is one of the reasons I lost that game. But what do we get here? We get ramming speed! All right, when revealed, if you're off course, the engaged ship enemy with the highest attack makes an immediate attack against you. That sucks. And to the end of the phase, add one to the total threat in the staging area for each damage dealt by that attack. Wow. And if no attack was made this way, this card gains Doom 2. That's great! That, that is great! doomed too and now I got a clear beacon uh, that that's no problem at all I have definitely won with this deck against the quest when it's been guarded by ships and also by locations but this is just going to make it a little bit easier okay and I draw my second sneak attack so if I get one Gandalf uh, I'm going to be sitting really good so this uh, this has a chance I have a chance to win here but all my games that I have won it has come down to the wire and it's been very fun like very fun battles all right, Envoy of Pelagir is going to come in. She only costs one because she gets to kick a resource back to a Gondor or Noble. I'm going to spend another resource to put in the Snowborn Scout. I'll spend Eowyn's resource to put in the Vassal of the Windlord. That gets me three allies in on turn one, which is really helpful for passing these sailing tests that are, like I said, very difficult. Okay, the other good thing about not having that beacon guarded by anything is there's not much threat in the staging area, which is really nice. All right, sailing test. We need to stay on course because if we get off course by two heading symbols, it's it's almost impossible to come back. So let's send four characters and... Okay, success. Oh, success. We only needed one. And... Oh, God. Okay, so three successes. That That's actually not what I wanted to see. I would have been much happier just with one. I don't know how to feel about that because we're on course, but... Yeah, okay. Sending to the quest... I'm debating whether or not to send both ships because there is a location you have to exhaust a ship objective to travel to, but we just discarded it with the sailing test. So I think I'll send them all and let's see what we get. God dang it. And it's a success symbol. So that's the one that I need to exhaust a ship objective to travel to. And it's a success symbol. So that was a lot of success symbols to get right here at the beginning which means sailing tests are going to be even harder. All right, done here gets, or Dune here, sorry, gets plus one attack when attacking alone into the staging area, and then the Silverwing gives him another plus one attack. So he attacks for four and does two damage to that scouting ship. It'd be nice if he got a weapon. Ooh, yes! Whew, okay, that, that's a huge help. I'm very excited to have gotten Steward of Gondor. That's going on Dune here because I have a lot of spirit allies, including the Aether Swordsman, who gets plus one for each other copy of Aether Swordsman that I have. Plus one willpower, that is. Let's play Unexpected Courage on Dune here so he can attack twice. Different targets, of course. 
And, I mean, the beacon is not being guarded. So we need to grab those warships as soon as we can. I have two sneak attacks in hand. So I just need one Gandalf, and then I'll be able to do a lot. All right, another sailing test coming up. And I'm nervous because we saw so many success symbols in the first few cards we've gotten. So let's send five characters. Not a success. Not a success. Not a success. Oh, come on. Not a success. Yes! Whoo, okay. <laughs> that, that was a close one, guys. Man, these sailing tests are stressful. Good lord. All right, we are going to send a total of 10 willpower, and we are currently up against 8. And the card we get is... How many times have we seen this card over the past few quests? Battle Hardened. So basically... Uh, raider enemies engage if you do stuff, but it surges because we don't have any raider enemies and we get instead Taking on water so we attach it to a ship objective when that ship objective Exhausts we deal two damage to it. We can exhaust three characters to get rid of that thing. Okay, so we do make some progress That's nice. I left a ship objective ready, so let's Travel to the location there. You saw I remembered to rotate my compass heading Dune here can once again attack into the staging area and do a couple damage. Be nice to get a weapon on him ASAP. All right, let's go into the next round. All right, draw a card. Well, that just happened. Ha! <laughs> I can't believe it. Uh, I was shocked when that happened. That was great. Okay, we are going to spend five resources, and we're going to grab one of these Dol Amroth warships. It is a 2, 2, 2, 8. It's immune, and it gets plus 2 to its stats when we are on course. So very, very awesome. It's gonna make it a lot easier to take out the Raider flagship the more ships we control because only ships can attack the Raider flagship. All right, and I'm gonna spend my last resource to sneak in Gandalf, still in shock that that is the card I drew. So he's going to come in and I'm gonna draw cards, obviously. I only have one card in hand. So let's see what else we can get. Looking for allies. Boom, there we go, three allies. So the deck is working the way it's supposed to. It's got just enough card draw to keep allies coming in, and between Fohammer, Ancient Mathem, and Gandalfs, you should be able to draw enough cards to keep going. It can stall out if you get unlucky, but uh, in practice, it's been working very well. All right, so once again, we need to pass a sailing test. I want to send at least four, five would be better, maybe even more. There's really a balancing act with this quest. You really need to balance when you want to engage the Raider flagship and also commit characters to the quests and also commit characters to sailing tests. It's tough. All right, so I did five. Oh, dang, first card was a success symbol. So now let's see what the, okay, that's, ah, crud. Okay, so if I'd only sent four, I would have got another objective that I could have maybe claimed. That would have been the card that was revealed. So that's all right, we are on course. So now let's commit to the quests. I'm not planning on engaging any ships. And so we are currently sending 12. We are up against five, and the card we get is Fog Bank. Okay, that's nice. So when it's the active location, ships don't make engagement checks. You can't attack them. They can't attack you. We do clear the active location, and then Gandalf leaves play, comes back into my hand. And if we make Fog Bank the active location, we can't use Dune here. But I have three characters ready, so I will exhaust three characters because I exhausted the Dream Chaser, which had Taking on Water on it. It took two damage and then you can discard taking on water. So that seemed like the smart move to do there. And yeah, let's go into the next round. So everybody readies, I'm gonna get extra resources thanks to Steward of Gondor, and I draw another Gandalf. Okay, excellent. So I have really good cards in hand, but I have five resources. I'm gonna grab the second and last warship because there are uh, ship enemies that can reattach to un to like unguarded objectives up in staging and that's what happened in my first game It got re-guarded and I never could grab the ships So I'm grabbing them while I can it just seems like the smart play then I had a really long debate Internally like mentally trying to decide if this was the round I wanted to engage the Raider flagship and I think I need to get a few more allies in play so I can handle questing and sailing and then you basically get boarded too. Okay, so committing to the sailing test. The first one was once again a success symbol. Again, oh, well, see, I don't know how to feel about it because I'm glad I'm back on course. And I'm also glad that I sent that many characters because I did not reveal those ships that I flipped over. 
So sailing with extra characters, but knowing that I also discarded ship enemies that I don't need to reveal uh, kind of balances it out. All right, I'm sending a lot more than threat and staging, and well, okay. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Crap. Oh, that's the worst one. So when it's in staging, it gets archery four and cannot be damaged, and it has boarding three. Oh, that, that didn't work. And we advanced the quest stage, which I also really should have been paying closer attention to. I don't think I realized I was that close to advancing. I probably would have held back my willpower had I realized I was going to advance, because now when I engage the Raider flagship, it no longer gets two damage if I'm on course, because I'm at stage two. Which is battle in the bay, so we need to find a ship, and then we need to have any unguarded objective in the staging area guarded by a ship. So that means another ship is coming into play. 2B is 16 quest points. It has sailing. If we're ever at the worst setting, the Raider flagship gets, gets minus 50 engagement costs. And we cannot advance if any objective is being guarded. The ship I'm going to grab is a Corsair Skirmisher. It's 28 engagement, 3, 4, 4, 6. It's immune. It has boarding 1. But if we destroy it, the engaged player can discard 3 willpower worth of allies to claim this thing and it gets willpower equal to its threat so that's another ship i can add to my armada if we do destroy it and i definitely want to and i definitely have to because i need to clear that objective to advance and there is only three success symbols left in the deck so not good odds in a sailing test that we're going to reveal any okay so that skirmisher is immune so that means you can't target it with Dune here, because he says he can target an enemy and immune cards cannot be targeted. So let's engage that thing and we are going to get boarding one. So let's make sure I shuffled that Corsair deck after my loss. I don't know if I just put the pirates right back on top. There's a couple Corsair enemies I really don't want to see. Okay, this one's fine. So he just steals resources after he attacks you. I didn't want the one that steals one of my attachments. And there's a couple that hit really hard or are really hard to kill. And I don't have a weapon on Dune here yet. So I'm not attacking for much. Okay, so three against three attacks, so no damage there. And then I'm going to have to take this attack undefended. And so there is uh, no shadow. That's nice. And I have to remember, they're supposed to be archery. So I should be putting archery damage on these ships as well. There we go. I do remember. Dune here is still attacking for four into the staging area. And so we are one hit point away from destroying that scouting ship. All right, it's time for No Man Am I. Eowyn is going to use her ability. So I'm going to ready her by raising my threat by three, and she's going to get plus nine attack, which means she's attacking for 11, which is enough to destroy that ship. And now I can claim it if I discard three willpower worth of allies. And I had debated not using her ability this round and waiting until I had Gandalf in play so I could just discard him. But honestly, I think I, it's better just to claim it. Just grab it when I can. I have allies in hand. I'm no longer spending all my resources to claim those warships. So we're going to discard the Aether Swordsman and Envoy. And now we have this awesome ship under our control. It's going to be questing for three if I want it to be. And it just makes destroying the flagship even easier. So I have quite the armada built up. I'm pretty happy about this. And we still have Dune here ready. And he is attacking for three. And that Umbar Raider guy is only two defense, so he does one damage to him. And the other thing is, is we have the beacon now clear. It's not guarded anymore. So if we make enough progress, we can advance. But I definitely want to destroy the Raider flagship before we place all the progress we need. So let's go into the next round. I'd really like to find a weapon. And I'm really debating now. Unseen Strike, okay, that's nice, but not what I really wanted. I'm really debating when to engage this Raider flagship. It's going to have boarding two, and then it gets a boarding every round that it's not destroyed. So you want to be able to destroy it in two rounds. So I just basically got to make sure I leave enough characters up to handle the defense from the Corsairs, and then be able to destroy that Raider flagship in two turns. So it's a balancing act. I spend a lot of time debating how much to send on sailing tests and questing when the Raider flagship is still in play. So I played Arwen. She will always boost Denethor when she exhausts and gives him plus one defense. And I decide to keep all my resources so I can use a sneak attack Gandalf in combat if I decide to engage the flagship this round. All right, let's go sailing. Man, having that scouting ship up in staging area still is making this really tough because if I go off course, it's coming down and then I really can't also engage the flagship. So Dune here not getting a weapon yet is really hurting me that he's still in play. So I'm really trying to balance what to do. So I'm sending four. Okay, there's a success. 
and so we're good there. I thought there was still objectives left, so I was feeling pretty confident that four would do it. Dream Chaser counts as two. All right, so now it's time to send to the quest. So Arwen will quest for two, and I was going to edit this segment down so you could not have to watch me think, but I, you know what? I'm going to leave it in. I'm going to let you guys see how much time I spend on some of these different phases of the game trying to math it out in my mind. So right now, what I'm trying to sort out is what's the least amount I can send on the quest so I don't have to raise my threat by a ton because I don't care if I make progress and plan on engaging the Raider flagship, which will have boarding two. But I need to leave enough attack on my ships so that I can destroy the Raider flagship next turn. So I got to do that math. Sneak attack Gandalf will help a lot, but there is a Raider enemy that steals a resource from every hero when it engages you. It's really hard. I mean, I'm really just debating if this is the round I want to grab this thing yet. Or maybe I just destroy the raider, engage with me, and I destroy the scouting ship up in staging, and then I try to engage the flagship next round. It's a tough call. I finally decide that sending 10 against 8 is going to have to be good enough, and I have enough ships ready that I can do some damage to the flagship and I'll be able to destroy it next turn. But we get boarding party, so my plans go out the window. I need to add the top... Corsair from the Corsair deck engage with me. Yeah, and it's the one that says I can't attack ship enemies while it's engaged with me. So, all right, well, all that planning and thinking really didn't matter, but I don't add any threat, so I actually make some progress. And then now I just am not going to engage anything because I need to try to deal with these two enemies. We have four archery we need to deal out. So one will go on Arwen, and then the other three will go on some of my ships. And it's really going to stink that I have these ships ready and I didn't do anything with them. I wish I would have been able to plan that better, but I had no idea what I was revealing. Sneak attack Gandalf, he's going to come in and deal four damage to that captain because it takes basically eight attack to kill him. And he attacks for five. So I need Gandalf to do the damage on the way in. And then Gandalf's going to defend four defense against five attack. And plus one, plus two, if I have a ship objective that's exhausted. So he almost kills Gandalf. So Gandalf takes three damage from that. And remember, you can't sneak in anybody before archery. So archery has to happen before you get an action window in the combat phase. Alrighty, so we got two attack against three. There goes an objective. And then now he's going to steal a resource. I guess I'll have him take Eowyn's resource, since I apparently cannot draw a weapon to save my life. And then attacking back, Dune here can finally swing up into the staging area and kill that scouting ship. Man, just one weapon, and it was just two attacks, but that, that was painful how long it took to get rid of that thing. And then Dune here can swing, and I'm going to use Unseen Strike to attack an enemy with a higher engagement than mine to give Dune here plus three. So he attacked for a total of six, and we do kill the captain. And unfortunately, I'm still engaged with that Umbar Raider. And he's going to keep stealing my resources if I don't spend them. Gandalf comes back into my hand, and we are going to go into the next round. All right, let's get our resources, and we'll draw a card. And the card we get is Quick Strike. Not actually useful if I don't have weapons on Dune here, because he's not attacking for enough for him to one-shot anything. Alrighty, I have enough resources to put in a Hand Maiden, so she quests for two and reduces my threat when she comes into play. So that's very nice. Another body on the table, and we'll get a second body on the table with Aaron Rider. So you can exhaust him to move resources around. He's just going to be committing to sailing tests at this point. And now we have Thinking with Chad. I'll speed through it this time. I was debating pulling back what I just played and maybe playing Gandalf instead just to kill that Umbar Raider guy. I could have also spent all my resources that way because I think the Aaron Rider could have came in. I think I made the wrong decision, guys. I think what I ended up doing was wrong. After some debate, I decide to send five characters on the sailing test. That'll leave me enough attack with my ships that I should be able to take out the Raider flagship in two turns. The only card left in the deck was not a success symbol, so now it gets shuffled back in, and we discard the next four card to see if we can get a success. There we go. Four cards to be discarded. We're looking for one success symbol, and there we go. First one was... And then the next, okay, so, geez, just like the beginning of the game, three out of the four cards were successes. All right, that's fine. So we're back on course, so I feel good about that. Now it's time to commit to the quest. So those two characters are for four. Once I do all the math, I realize I only need to damage the flagship 
by four, and then the next round I can finish it off. So I'm going to send the two warships for four each plus Aowen. So we're going to send a total of 15 against six, and we get, oh, Cobus Haven. Okay, that that's really good. I'm really happy to see that because that reduces the boarding by one. So now I'm not going to get boarded when I engage that Raider flagship. So that worked out great. So we are going to engage the Raider flagship for sure now. And then we just get boarded at the end of the encounter phase per the effect on the card. And what I've basically decided at this point is if I have to lose a hero to an attack by one of these Corsairs, I lose a hero. I'm just trying to kill this flagship. I've almost made enough progress to win. And oh god, okay, so we end up getting the raid leader who attacks for five, which is really bad. And he steals a resource from each of your heroes when he engages you. So that wasn't great. So he's going to be almost impossible to kill. It takes eight to kill him. So really, I just got to hope I don't lose two heroes this round. Because I might. It's very, very possible. Okay, first up, Denethor defending for four thanks to Arwen's boost against a five attack. And we get a shadow that says plus one, plus two if we are off course. So he almost dies. He's going to take two damage. So Denethor actually lived. And now we're going to take the Raider flagship attack undefended. No shadow. So we're going to do five damage. And then I also remember archery in a minute. So I will be putting archery on some of my ships. And then this is the risky one. This is the one I got to take undefended or maybe Dune here could live. So I decide to let Dune here defend. I actually don't really need him at this point. So he could live, and there is no shadow, so he does live. So that was a close one. If I lost him, it wasn't going to be the end of the world. It just would have hurt, but um, he actually lived. So that Umbar Raider steals my last resource, so I lost three resources this combat phase. And then this is when I remember archery, so I'm going to add the archery damage. And Dune here is going to do one more damage on that Umbar Raider. This is why I think I screwed up. It would have maybe made more sense to send Gandalf in in the planning phase and then not make as much progress as I did, and he could have killed that raider, but it is what it is. Okay, so my two ready ships attack for eight, which does five damage to the flagship. So I am five out of 18 from destroying it, and we will go into the next round. All right, I have five resources, so... <laughs> Yeah, Spear of the Mark. Okay, that's useless right now. So five resources. I'm going to play Gandalf. I should have played him last round. That was really risky because if I had lost Dune here, I wouldn't have had enough resources this round to play him. So that was a strategic mistake on my part that I got very lucky. So Gandalf is coming in, and he's going to kill that Umbar Raider, which he should have done last round. I was kicking myself in that combat phase for not playing Gandalf. All right, so we have nine progress out of 16 and we really don't want to advance this round. We want to advance next round, assuming we kill the Raider flagship. We are also not severely penalized for failing a sailing test at this point. So I'll just send three characters on the sailing test. And if we fail, we fail. Because the negative is we get engaged by the Raider flagship, which we already are. So not a big deal. Okay, so three and... Okay, the second one was a success. So we are back on course. And now we just need to quest for enough to not have our threat go crazy. Combat is really our focus this round. So let's just send a few characters on the quest. So we'll send Aowen for four, Arwen and the Handmaiden for four more. So that is a total of eight against three. And we have a active location that we have to quest through. Let's see what we get. Oh, geez, this one again. Okay. Oh, that's bad. Okay, so Battle Hardened is going to make the raiders engaged with me attack me after they get a resource i really didn't want to get three raider attacks this round so that's pretty nasty so this guy's attacking for five gandalf will defend he was going to defend for me in combat okay and the shadow does nothing so he lives we clear the active location and we make one progress on the quest so we are at 10 out of 16 and now we're going to go into a very tough combat phase. So I'm not going to engage that flagship. And then at the end of the encounter phase, we need to take the top Corsair enemy. And good lord, it's another raid leader. But this time, there's no resources for it to steal. But it's still attacking for five. All right, guys, I'm sorry, but we're going to lose some heroes. Well, since Gandalf is exhausted, he's going to take three of the archery and the Aaron Rider will take one. And then let's deal out these shadow cards on these hero killers. So these raid leaders are attacking for five, 
and I don't have anything that can defend for him right now. So first we're going to take an attack from the Raider flagship, and I actually have enough attack on four of my ships that I can defend with the Dream Chaser, so I might as well do that. So let's have the Dream Chaser defend the Raider flagship. It's going to be five against four. Uh, there is no shadow, so I take just a little bit of damage from that. And then, yep, two big attacks coming that I'm really not able to handle. So Denethor never got his one Gondorian shield. And to be honest, I never really built up a big army where I could have left characters up for chump blocking as I have in previous games of this deck. This game went a little strange, but Denethor, so long, buddy. You did good. You did good. I mean, you get a bad rap sometimes, but in this quest, you did just fine. All right, Dune here, you never held on to a weapon. It took you three or four rounds to kill one ship. Um, I'm not too sad to see you go. You're no hell, dear. All right, and then finally, we're going to swing back with each of these ships attacking for four. So four times four is 16. 16 minus three is 13. And so that is enough to do 18 damage to the Raider flagship. So that ship goes down in flames. We are still engaged with these two raid leaders, but now what we need to do is quest for enough to get 16 progress on the quest. There is 10 right now, and there is only three threat in staging. We have one lonely tactics resource to our name. We are definitely poor, and we get a bag of ancient mathem that we cannot play. There's really no point in playing the Spear of the Mark at this point because victory is in sight. So we're going to send three on the sailing test. Again, it's not a big deal if we fail it. So no success, no success, and success. Okay, so we actually passed it, which was a surprise. So everybody with willpower is going on this quest. Eowyn is in charge of a massive armada, and we are sending every ship, we are sending every character with willpower. We need to make six progress. And here's the thing, if we reveal an objective and have to guard it with something, and it's not a treachery, so it is a guarded objective, we can't advance, and we will lose. Let's see what we get. And it's, oh no, oh no, this is fine. Okay, so this ship at the end of the quest phase attaches to an objective. If it would have attached to objective right now, we would have lost the game because we can't advance if there's any objectives currently being guarded. But that only added two threats. So we do make the six progress, which lets us advance to stage three. Stage 3A, break through the fleet. We make engagement checks against each enemy in the staging area. The Raider flagship gets minus 50 engagement costs. Okay, no problem. And then this side says it's five, it's sailing, minus 50 engagement costs for the flagship. It gets plus five for each ship enemy. But the big one is if the Raider flagship is in the victory display, you have won. So we win right now. That is a victory, and that was a hard-fought battle. Whew, okay, that was a good one. That was a good game. It definitely went different than my playthroughs playing this deck against the quest to get ready for the video. And if you want to stick around, here is the first game I played where it ended up as a loss. So I had a decent opening hand, some cheap allies. I did get my shield, no steward, but I got card draw and I got Gandalf, no weapon either, but hopefully with Ancient Mathem and Gandalf, I'll find a weapon. Not bad. So now it's time to see what my objective gets guarded by. And unfortunately, it's this ship. The reason this stinks is it's immune to player card effects, so Dune here can't attack up into the staging area to clear it. However, I do clear it pretty quickly by engaging it and then triggering Eowyn, and then as you can see, my board state is progressing nicely, and then I get this one. That's the one we revealed at the end of my game. So it's going to attach to the beacon at the end of the quest phase, and that one is a lot harder to kill because it has a lot of defense. And then the next turn this happens, so I'm committing to the sailing test, and it doesn't go well. I sent four characters in the hopes of being able to engage that ship up in staging guarding the beacon, but no successes. So now I'm off course, which means I'm going to be off course the following turn by two, and I have to engage the scouting ship, which of course is not what I wanted. And then this guy steals my shield. So things were looking decent, and then they quickly went downhill. The next turn, I really don't have a choice. I can't send a ton of characters on the sailing test because I can't have my threat go insane. I still haven't got control of the beacon. So I send four because I haven't revealed a lot of success symbols, just hoping I can get two and I get none. So now I'm off course by two. And if I'm ever at the worst setting during the engagement checks, the 
Raider flagship gets minus 50 engagement. Not to mention my ships are taking a beating because I'm sending them on the quest. They're having to take undefended attacks. It's not going well. And at this point, I actually need to reveal three success symbols, but I haven't been revealing a lot. Like I think most of my objectives are in the bottom cards of the deck and that's where I'm at. So, so I send six characters on the sailing test as a last ditch effort to get back on course and it worked. So I actually have four success symbols in the bottom cards and I reshuffle and discard one more card and I'm like, okay, maybe, maybe this is gonna be a story of like a major comeback. Babel Harden comes out that turn. That stinks because now I have an extra attack coming from that raider, but I'm surviving. I just have so much damage on my ships. I can have my Dream Chaser defend that ship and it won't die. And if I can claim the beacon and then start getting some warships, I might be able to pull out of this. So I was kind of getting hopeful that what we were watching was a really good comeback game. So I actually have Steward because I cleared some a bunch of Ancient Mathems. So I have a bunch of cards in hand. And that's why I was like, this, this, this might work. I have the cards in hand. My board state isn't terrible except for all the damage on the ships. So as long as my ships don't have to take any more damage before I get the warships, we might be able to do this. Unfortunately, in the quest phase... Uh, things don't go well. So I was able to stay on course, but in the quest phase with my threat at 35, I revealed scouting ship, which killed me. That that kills me. The silver wing doesn't have enough hit points left to defend it, and if I take it undefended, I lose one of the ships as well. So that's going to kill me. I thought it was going to be a really good comeback. I think if I had just gotten a little lucky, maybe grabbed a location instead of that ship, I might have been able to. But, uh, you know, to add insult to injury, then I lose an attachment when I get boarded. So that was a loss. I was close. I feel like I was close, and I have only lost one out of four games with this deck. So I think it's a pretty good deck. So I hope you enjoyed this video, everybody. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.